Hi, I'm John Ingman. Welcome to this presentation on Blackboard blogging. When looking at the best use of a blog, let's compare it to journals and discussion posts, where a journal is really good at one-to-one -one communication between the learner and the teacher. A blog is meant for communication with a large group. When we look at discussion posts, we find they are good for many learners' communication and response, where blogs are aimed at more at individual learners to communicate information. What are blogs good at and how can they be used? You will need to look to the needs of your learners. Blogs give the learner a sense of ownership which will help motivate them in their writing. This can also foster commitment and engagement. It gives the learner a means to effectively communicate with the entire class, although it is not necessarily the best tool for collaborating with the rest of the class. A blog is a tool aimed more at the individual learner as it allows them to think and ponder lessons, apply what they know, and share feelings and experiences. Because of this, a blog is also a great way for the teacher to evaluate what knowledge the learner has gained through the course of the lessons. So you've decided to use a blog in your class. How do we add it to your Blackboard course? The first thing to do is to access the course in Blackboard. On the top right hand side of the screen, change the edit mode to on. Now go to the control panel on the left and find course tools. On the control panel, by clicking on the course tools, you will expand the course tools section. In the menu, find and click on blogs. We will now create the blog in the course. On the blogs listing page, Click the Create Blog on the action bar. Let's name the blog. On the Create Blog page, type the name for the blog. I have named the example Class Blog. You can type optional instructions for the blog, and you can format the text and add images, links, multimedia, mashups, and attachments using the functions in the Content Editor. Attachments you add can be added in a new window and have alternative text added. Let's scroll down the screen for blog settings. For blog availability, select the Yes option to make it available to users. You can also select the blog date and time restrictions, which you can set a blog to display on a specific date and time and to stop displaying on a specific date and time. Select the Display After and Display Until checkboxes to enable the date and time selections. Use the pop-up date selector calendar and the Time Selection menu to select dates and times. These display restrictions do not affect the blog availability, only when it appears. Scroll down to the Blog Participation section. Select Individual to All Students or course. You can also select allow anonymous comments for individual blogs or allow anonymous entries and comments for the course and group blogs. In the blog settings section, select monthly or weekly index entries. An option is to select the checkbox to allow users to edit and delete entries. Another option is to select the checkbox to allow users to delete comments. In the Grade Settings section, select No Grading or the Grade option and type the number of points possible. Points possible will apply to one or more entries made by the user to the blog topic. After you enable grading, a column is created automatically in the Grade Center. If you do this, remember that it is permanently gradable and you will not be able to change the setting to No Grading. You are now ready to click Submit. Are you still wondering if a blog is the right tool for your users? Below are a few links to websites that will give you more information on blogging to help you with that choice. Also, here's information from Blackboard to tell you what a blog is and how it can be used. This article also has links to help create and manage blogs. You'll find a complete transcript of this presentation, including these links in the Q&A section of the class discussion post. Thank you for watching.